Starting live video. It looks like we're live. We're live? Well, welcome to the sunroom in Carberry. Uh, my name is Ray Johnson and uh, we have Leslie here and Ralph and doing some live streaming on, on and some teaching tonight from uh, the sunroom. And um, so welcome. Today is the uh, 9th of uh, January and I just want to send out uh, special greetings to uh, Pastor Ray McLean and, and Jean McLean because this is their anniversary for 39 years in ministry here in Manitoba. I picked that up off of uh, Facebook so um, you know it, it's pretty awesome to think that um, we have ministries that are that mature and that strong and um, here uh, here in Manitoba for 39 years so um, so congratulations welcome we know you're a well anointed uh, uh, ministry. So, Pastor Ray, uh, I know you're having a gathering at, at the launching place tonight in Winnipeg, and so uh, we're encouraged uh, uh, to celebrate with you. But um, as we go into the Word, I just wanted everybody to know what was happening um, on this day, on the 9th, which is a special day to you, Ray, and, uh, um, and bless you for it. Bless you for all the hard work. And, you know, ministry is not an easy thing. And, uh, I've been I've been um, saying for uh, quite some time uh, about uh, doing just a little brief teaching on the crowns and uh, oh there 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 it is I got you got to realize this is all kind of new to us too and uh, I've been put, putting I, I think that you know um, I, me and my wife fingers being watched in. Uh Fiji. Fiji. Oh, George is online. Oh, hey, George. Bula. Bula <laughs> Veneka. Hey. Um, I've been putting a lot of stuff up in regards to what's happening in the prophetic and uh, different places around the world. Um, and and because of that, uh, for about, uh, I don't know, approximately the last uh, uh, a year and a bit, uh, different individuals asked asked me to teach on the crowns. Now I put up a, a, a Facebook uh, uh, teaching on the crowns. Um, I should have had it right here, but I don't. So the first crown we're going to look at, and the reason I'm doing the doing this this brief teaching on this, is that around the world there are so many people going through so much tribulation. Uh, it's 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 not an easy time to uh, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when I say that, um, there are all kinds of other forces that are uh, happening in the world that uh, want to prevent you from, uh, how can I, from having the boldness uh, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and to be that evangelist and, and, and to share the word. And uh, so I'm just going to ask Leslie to open up in prayer and we're going to get right into it, okay? Mm -hmm. Father God, we want to thank you that above all else, you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and there is absolutely nothing too difficult for you. So Father, we come before you and we just say we lift up the name of Jesus. And when the name of Jesus is lifted up, then shall all men and women be drawn unto him. So Lord, we just thank you that you are drawing people by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you that um, you give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Lord, we just want to take captive every thought that would try to exalt itself above the, um, the name of Jesus, that would take all those vain imaginations. We just bring those into captivity and we say, no, we want to hear only what the Spirit of the living God has to say. So Lord, we just um, we commit this time now into your hands and Father, we just thank you that you will lead us and guide us. And Lord, that you will bless your people all over the globe, Lord. You will bless your people, Father. And Lord, I just, I just pray strength, God, strength for those who are feeling weakened or who are, are so tired from the fight, God. I just pray strength in, into their very beings. And Lord, that even, you know, in the, even though we can't be there in person, but God, that we would stand with our brothers and sisters. And Lord, we would lift up their arms that are getting weary so that the battle continues to be won, that the battle will be won. And Father, for, for those we think of those in Australia, especially right now, God, yes, for fighting the fire. So Lord, we just thank you that it will be the, the only fire that would burn over there would be 
Lord, that the fire of the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost and fire, mm. but <clears throat> that it would be the, the downpouring of rain in the natural, but also the rain of your spirit. That the rain, the rain of the spirit and the rain in the natural to douse the fires, but the rain in the spirit to just help to encourage one everybody that's, that's really feeling so exhausted, Lord, that there would be refreshing. So we speak refreshing yeah. to our brothers and sisters. And we thank you for this time. We bless it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We've got Amen. Pastor Sunil on here from India. Ah. Uh, Ella Mae Finley, Gary Olmstead, my oh. son, Sean. Oh, Sean. Hi, Sean. <laughs> Gary Olmstead from Carvery. Well, welcome. Well, Br uh, Bryce Macken Martindale, okay. Vicki Ortega, uh -huh. Gay wow. McFarlane. Okay. That's all I see. Right well, we're now. right around the world, right yeah. from Carberry, from the Sunroom. So, um, I've uh, I want to start off with this bit of teaching because it's something that is not taught. At least uh, it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't come up very much anywhere. And uh, I looked at my notes. Um, <laughs> these whole notes here. <laughs> you see that? Uh, I preached this mm -hmm. uh, 20 years ago, uh, 2009. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, I don't think I've preached maybe once on it since. But uh, I, we are at a time and a season that, uh, you know, there's some things in the Word of God that says that, that teach the whole, uh, you know, the whole Word of God, the whole book of God, and to, to have this understanding. Now, there are five crowns that I'm going to be teaching about tonight, and each one has nothing to do with us human beings. <laughs> mm -hmm. When I say that, you can't go out and earn a crown. You've got to have the right heart to do it. And uh, um, if you're striving in your minute, if you're striving in your ministry to do well, you need to just allow Jesus give him the reins back and uh, and, and just flow together with the how can I say, be in the river him and let the arrow flow straight. But the, the first crown I'm going to talk about, um, there, as I say, there's going to be five of them. The first crown I'm going to talk about is the crown of, or the, uh, of uh, the incorruptible. And uh, that's kind of, uh, you know, it, it's a kind of an interesting thing. Uh, the crown of the incorruptible, or sometimes it's called the, the crown of the imperishable, or the internal blessing. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's important for us to know this because, um, you know, in the last 10 years, now uh, I preached this 20 years ago, but in the last 10 years, I put, I put up some statistics uh, uh, last week uh, saying that uh, the, the known number of uh, martyrdoms or people being uh, killed uh, for their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ in the last 10 years is about a million people. Now, it's probably... So if they know it's a million people, it's probably higher. Now, uh, I put in, I, in what I wrote about a week ago, I said, you know, to put this into context, like uh, Fiji is, a, is, is just around a million people. So can, can you imagine like a nation like Ke uh, Fiji just disappearing, the whole population? Uh, but, and there's a lot of other nations that, you know, have those smaller populations, but uh, a million people is is significant in the last ten years, and it's growing more and more and more in regards to the attack against the body of Christ. Now, um, you'll find that I am going to be moving back and forth a little bit based on uh, the timing of God and the seasons of God. And when I say this timing and the seasons of God, uh, right now we're in. We've just moved into a, a new decade uh, in regards to heaven invading earth, and it's called pay, pay, uh, P-E-Y. And I've, I, you know, if you go to my uh, Facebook or, or, or email me or whatever, I, I, can, I can send you some of the information on it. But there's a lot of things coming out in the, since September 29th, 2019, in regards to the Hebraic uh, change in regards to going to 5780 uh, in regards to the, their calendar. Uh, in, in the Hebrew calendars now, so the five seven eight zero is a very significant thing. So that means in this change, uh, five stands for yeah, five stands for grace, but it also st stands for the apostolic order because it says Jesus is the cornerstone, and on the cornerstone, then you know what comes next is the apostles, and then the prophets, and then the evangelist, and then the t the teacher and the pastor. 
So, but they all have to be as one, as one, as one. And uh, um, I, I want you to understand that we need to be as one more than ever before in this next decade. Because five stands not only for the apostolic or the apostolic flow, but let's just call it um, apostolic alive. You know, uh, you know, not the apostolic falling asleep or not the apostolic uh, uh, not being accepted by the body of Christ or, or different denominations. There has to be, a, a, how can I say, a real unity uh, going forward in the next 10 years. And um, there are some places where apostles aren't really recognized or prophets or uh, some people don't like evangelists because they all they come in is they blow up the church and they leave. But, uh, um, but that's part of what God has designed an evangelist to do is to come in and stir things up. And, uh, to, and in the stirring of things up, we'll raise up more evangelists and stir up the area. So we'll talk a little bit about that later too. But the teaching is so important. And last week I, I talked about the teaching and, and, the, and, the, and the R factor and that particular R factor for teaching. You know, um, if we are going to move into this, this next decade, there are things that are going to happen where heaven invades earth and the principles and precepts of heaven are going to manifest them, themselves upon the kingdom of this, this world, this earth. And who's, who's the Lord going to use? Well, uh, we, have been, we have been the designated <laughs> people who have been appointed to, uh, to rise up at, a, at, at this time. I, I, this, this is a new season. The 5780, it, it, it means the breath of God. And, and as far as God speaking and, and breathing, but his breath, his nepish of God, the breath of God. And, and when God blows his breath out, it's... it's uh, the Ruach Hakodesh. When you go back and and you and you read in Genesis and there, where where the uh, where God uh, takes the earth and blows His breath into the earth and and uh, it forms man while He's blowing the Holy Spirit into earth and Adam uh, came to being and Adam means blood and earth and uh, well you know if everything had worked out and there hadn't been sin we would still be there you know uh, we would we would be with. You know, we would be with our father in the garden, but it didn't work out. So plan B came into being. The second Adam and Jesus was the, how could I say? He created the uh, restoration to, to us, to the father. And so part of that R factor that I talked and spoke about last week is um, important for us to understand that the first R I taught, you know, you can go back and look at it, it was repentance and then the, the second R that we have to move into as the bride of Christ be, uh, is there has to be a renewal. And I talked about Acts 3.19 where it says, repent for times of refreshing are near. Now that refreshing, you go and you look at that in the Hebrew, that's, uh, that's, that's the Father in heaven. It, it, it says Ruach HaKadosh. In other words, the Father's blowing his breath back into his beloved to bring them alive. He's refreshing us. So I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm getting kind of excited about how much refreshing I see all around North America and in different parts of the world. So from that, uh, from that refreshing and that renewal becomes a revival. And everybody, you know, in Canada here, we're, we're really getting excited about uh, a revival. And uh, on, on uh, this Saturday on the 11th, there's, a, uh, you know, uh, uh, Tiffany and Tracy and a, and a whole number are doing uh, burn, uh, uh, what is it called, burn 11, 7, 24, 20, 7. 24 7. And uh, they're going to have uh, worship from uh, mm -hmm. 12 noon to 12 min uh, midnight at Bethel Christian Assembly in Brandon. So if you can make it, that's a good place to be because it's going to, this is part of the re refreshing and the, and the renewal, but the fire, you know, and uh, the fire of God needs to uh, ignite uh, the bride of Christ. And, uh, and if, if we have a full anointing, I don't know about you, but if, if, if you've got a whole, uh, some beautiful anointing or oil or some gasoline and you put a match to it, it goes whoosh. So that's what they're believing for in Brandon is this whoosh of the fire of God to uh, come forth and uh, they just finished a, 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 a burn in Calgary and different places uh, uh, in, in Canada and around. So I, I, I know that uh, some of this may, but the next R factor is, is the rathma, which is the teaching. 
So if you if, if you go so far and you're and you're and you're flowing in the spirit and everything's going great, but if you don't get into the prophetic teaching from the teacher to explain to you what is happening, so that you, the millennials are not going to move on anything unless they know exactly what's happening. And um, but the Rafma is is the teaching from the Word of God, and that's what we're going to do about here tonight. And uh, and it's important for us to. Uh, when we come into that rathma of the real understanding, it, it brings us into a, a place of restoration and, uh, and, and even reformation as well. And, and then there, there becomes a, a reaping and a real evangelism and what, I, what we call resurrection life, the Jesus within us, uh, you know, as far as Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. And all of a sudden it goes whoosh and... Uh, that's what we're looking for all across Canada, around the world, and, and uh, there's a lot of wonderful things happening. So part of this whole R factor goes into um, what's happening uh, in other places of the world where things are tougher. And that's why I wanted to do a little bit of teaching on, on, on these crowns. And it's nothing, it's nothing that we can go and say, I'm going to go out and earn this. It's just that, you know, do you have the, do you, do you love and have a passion for the Father. Uh, are you um, the Holy Spirit within you? Is it is it exploding to do the things that uh, will enhance uh, the the you know the, the the nine gifts of the Spirit and the nine fruits of the Spirit? This passionately inside you, not only coming out of you, but to uh, to encourage others. And uh, so, so let's look at uh, the first crown. Uh, of uh, uh, which is called the crown of the incorruptible or uh, the crown uh, if, if Leslie if you could read from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 13 and then we'll uh, then we'll go to 1 Corinthians 9 24 to 26 and uh, 1 Corinthians 3 13 yeah just, just yeah because you know um, where the spirit of the Lord is there is what I want you to know there is no sleeping church where the spirit of the Lord is. Mm. It's going to wake you up. And that's part of this whole thing that's happening right now. So Leslie, uh, um, 3.13. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I guess it's starting in 12, maybe, because it kind of carries on. Yeah. Um, As others build on the foundation, whether with gold, silver, gemstones, wood, hay, or straw... The quality of each person's work will be revealed in time as it is tested by fire. Tested by fire. Keep going. Um, if a man's work stands the test of fire, he will be rewarded. If a man's work is consumed by the fire, his reward will be lost, but he will be spared and rescued from the fire. Don't you understand that together you form a temple to the living God and his spirit lives among you? If someone comes along to corrupt, vandalize, and destroy the temple of God, you can be sure that God will see to it that he meets destruction because the temple of God is sacred. You, together, are his temple. Amen. And uh, for those that have been following the teaching in the last year or so, uh, even the last six months, um, um, well... Even the last three years, and I, I put up I, I put up another post from three years ago because it just it just grabbed me in regards to the Hebraic calendar of five seven seven seven, because uh, three years ago, when the seven 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 happened, that that is basically in the spirit is is a flaming sword, mm -hmm. that is a, a sword of righteousness, and uh, uh, one of the things that. I was uh, teaching and prophetically speaking on and that type of thing, that's why I put it back up, is that um, God was going to take his flaming sword and separate those uh, individuals that were using his altar for their business. In other words, uh, there was strange fire on it, there were people that were um, false prophets, false teaching, whatever you want. In other words, uh, the glory was going back to whatever the individual was or the ministry or the issues or so on. And God says, no, uh, that's not, no, the, my, my, uh, my, my temple is, is holy. My temple is righteous and my altar is the same thing. 
and I am going to bring my altar back because I am a jealous God. I am jealous uh, for what is happening in the temple, but I am jealous for my, for my loved ones. I am, I am jealous for my bride, and my bride is being tainted. My bride is being seduced, and I'm not going to allow my bride to be seduced by the spirit of man. And this is one of the things that is so strong right now is this spirit of seduction. And we're going to get there. But I want you to understand that God is cleaning up his house. And if we have to repent, repent, please, because times are refreshing are here. And he's bringing, he's bringing uh, how can I say, correction. And he's bringing uh, judgment to his house first and to his leaders. So if our hearts aren't right, the Holy Spirit is going to bring conviction. So um, that's why uh, 1 Corinthians 3.13 is good because, you know, at that time of judgment, if everything you've done is, is just because you're doing it unto yourself, it's not going to be, uh, it's not worth anything. It's going to be burnt up in the fire. It has to be done unto uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven. It has to be done that, it, it, uh, how could I say? It has to be done in the right heart. And, uh, and we may start off in a place where we have a spirit of error and the spirit of truth is, uh, is working on. I know that I've been in ministry now about 25 years or 30. And, you know, God's really been working on me and to get things right in the house. And I understand that. So we're always going through this. Uh, how, how could I say Repent. the potter and the clay and, and, the, and you put you back on the spinning wheel and, and gets the pot right again. We'll talk, you know, that's part of this whole process. So now let's, let's read 1 uh, Corinthians 9, 24 to 26. Now this is talking about this, uh, this crown that is imperishable. Now if you're going to get something that's imperishable, uh, if, there's, if there's any hidden sin in you, and the uh, scripture I'm going to talk about is Psalm 90, uh, verse uh, 8. It says, if there's, if there's, any, if there's anything that's um, hidden in darkness in your heart, the Lord says, I will bring it out of your heart, out of darkness, into the light at the appointed time. Now, this is a time and a season. So this is an appointed time where we've got to get... God's breath is coming down upon the just and the unjust, and he's been pouring out the anointing he, because he's looking for his bride without spot or wrinkle. That means that if you've got any spots or wrinkles in you, he's got to get them out, and you've got to give them to him. You can't, you can't hide them. You can't say, no, that's, that's, that's my hidden sin, and I, I can keep that sin. And God says, no, you give it to me. So go, go ahead. Let's, uh... So 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 to 26. Yeah. And this is from the voice translation. So we all know that when there's a race, all the runners bolt for the finish line, but only one will take the prize. When you run, run for the prize. Athletes in training are very strict with themselves, exercising self-control over desires. And for what? For a wreath that soon withers or is crushed or simply forgotten? This is not our race. We run for the crown that we will wear for eternity. So I don't run aimlessly. I don't let my eyes drift off the finish line. When I box, I don't throw punches in the air. Verse 27, I discipline my body and make it slave so that after all this, after I have brought the gospel to others, I will still be qualified to win the prize. So run the race, uh, run the race well, and and the Lord wants you to finish well. You know, um, sometimes you're running the race and you take a detour, and that detour takes your mind and your and the plan and the purpose that God has for you, and you do a you go to the right or the left, and uh, because of uh, let's say a hidden desire or whatever it may be, and the Lord said He He doesn't stop you from making that uh, choice. He allows you to make that choice. Even though it's a wrong one, he allows you to make the choice so that however you're going to go in the wrong direction off that uh, running the true race, uh, he's going to be with you. And there are so many prodigal sons that that uh, go the wrong way and, uh, and the father's always looking for you. He never gives up on you. But whatever the issue is, whatever, however far you go the wrong way as a prodigal son or, or an orphan spirit or, uh, or, or as an orphan... The, 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 Jesus says, I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. And nobody's going to take you out of my hand. And the Father says that too. So, uh, but he's going to allow you to work, you know, God's storms. Eh, George, 
God's storms are his mercies in disguise. And sometimes the Lord, the Lord will allow a storm in your life based on your decision so that you can come to a place and make the right things right so you, don't have, you won't do that again. And uh, I know uh, George just loved, loved me speaking on that particular uh, a sermon. In other words, again, God's storms, not your storms, and not the devil's storms. God's storms are his mercies in disguise to what? To walk a greater covenant walk with you. So don't be re rebuking God when he's trying to correct you. So you better have the right spirit into you, in you and to know that what, what's in you, the Holy Spirit's been convicting you and say, you've got to give that to God. Now, if it's the devil uh, causing difficulty, well, rebuke him. Get him. You, you have authority over him. You have all authority over him. And if it's you out of your own, how could I say, prostituted flesh based on things that you have made decisions in the past and say, I am going to continue to uh, walk this way because I know how to manipulate and get things that I want this way. God says, that's got to stop. You can't, you can't minister my gospel and you can't love your children or my children manipulating them for your purposes. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get none, you're not going to get this crown because you're not running the race and you're not going to finish it properly. So this this incorruptible crown means that you need to be in a place where you have a heart of purity and and you you are a worshiper. And if you can worship in spirit and in truth as it says in John chapter 4 uh, 22 and 23 the father seeks those who worship in spirit and in truth. What a beautiful thing. So, um, again, you can't strive for this uh, crown of, uh, of the incorru incorruptible, or let's call it the crown of imperishable as well, depending on the interpretation of it. Another scripture I'd like you to read right now, uh, Leslie, is John 7, verse 17. And um, in other words, uh, stay the course. Um, you know, when you run the race, you stay the course. And uh, have, you, have you got that, Leslie? Yeah, yeah. If anyone is willing to act according to his purposes, that is to God's purposes, and is open to hearing truth, he will know the source of my teaching. Does it come from God or from me? Yes, and that's part of the rachma of the, of the teaching in the Holy Spirit. And the rhema too, but the rachma, R-A-P-H-A -A, uh, in the Hebrew, that, that's, it's important that everything lines up properly. Because we are going to be tested by false, we know that uh, there's going to be false teachers and false preachers and uh, false prophets and, and all kinds of witchcraft going out there. And there's all kinds of uh, other issues where uh, demons are causing all kinds of uh, maybe other issues. And we have to be in a place to take authority over them. How can you take authority over something when if there is uh, some hidden sin in you? And... Uh, so part of this whole teaching, let's get the house cleaned up, okay, and get everything right. And one of the five crowns may be presented to you at the time of uh, judgment. And uh, uh, there's nothing you can work on, but just work on your heart to get right things right. And this, this I want you to know, there is so much spiritual warfare that comes with this crown. Do you understand? This is not an easy, it's not a gimme. You are going to be in spiritual warfare. Anybody that's doing anything to advance the kingdom of God, especially you worshipers, the enemy is going to attack and try to get you off your game. In regards to when I say game, your purpose and the plan that God has for you as a worshiper and, and try to get you, what I, if it's a track and, and it's a train and, it, and then there's a, there's a spur that goes off to the right or to the left, well, uh, what what that particular uh, spirit of error or spirit of evil wants to do is get you away from the spirit of truth and get you turned to the left or the right into the graveyard of the enemy's delights and maybe your past sins and passions and keep you there as long as he can. No, not on my watch, not on your pastor's watch, not on those people that you're accountable to, that you be in a place that you're accountable. So if you struggle with certain things, get prayer, uh, can work through it, and uh, 
because God is not going to allow anybody to taint his uh, his. Well, I want you to know his temple. We're a temple, as Leslie said, of the Holy Ghost and that type of thing. But the altar of God is the altar of God. It's not your altar. It's no church's altar. It's no denomination. It is divine. So that's what we we got to get our human being thinking out of this. And it's heaven invading earth. And why would heaven want to invade earth? Well, the plan right from the beginning was to be for us to be with the Father in the garden. So that's going to happen again. But right now we've got to go through some struggles. And, we, and, and one of the things that's going to happen uh, once we go, th go through that judgment and go through different things is this crown of, uh, of the incorruptible or the imperishable. So I want you to know... <clears throat> Because it's the first crown, it's the one that's going to be the challenge the greatest because of the spiritual warfare. Does that make sense? If, if God's got a plan in your life, chances are the enemy's going to know about it and going to try to deter. Uh, or if he's got a call in your life. Well, look, look at Paul. You know, uh, Acts chapter 9, 15. You know, uh, Paul was a very intelligent guy. And uh, in, in, in the things of the kingdom of this world... He, he was a very intelligent. He was very young, and he wanted to make a name for himself. And he was, and he 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 grabbed the hottest thing that was going on and said, "You cru crucify and and uh, uh, get all these Christians out of the way and uh, this type of thing, and and you're going to raise up in power. You're going to raise up in a higher place. Uh, and uh, so there's going to be all those kind of people out there with the with the wrong type of uh, spirit of error or evil, okay. and that are going to contest you." But that's where you got to come together and pray against those things in your community, in your, uh, I'm going to say in your church too, because they sneak in there. And I want to say in your city or maybe in your area, because the enemy doesn't want to give it up. And in Brandon or wherever you are, it doesn't matter. The enemy wants to keep the kingdom of his turf, his, but he knows he's going to lose. So right now he's fighting even harder to keep it and mess up more people. So we've got to be stronger so that's where that spiritual warfare, and we have to know our authority. And even in the Great Commission, where it talks about it in Matthew 28, you know, verses 18 to 24, he says, I give you all authority. All, all in all, all authority. You know, if you want to look up all in the dictionary, you know, it's not A-W-L. How do you spell all? You know, if you're going to kind of get A-W-L. A-W-L. You know, it's not something you stick in and, and create a hole or something, eh? No, all means all. A-L-L. -L. And we are all in all. And that's the unity of the bride of Christ. You must the bride of Christ in unity, all in all, walking in authority, walking in unconditional love and love and reaching out and, and uh, unconditional, uh, how can I say, uh, a forgiveness for ourselves and other people that we can walk in, have pure hearts and acceptance for others. So that's so that's part, part of this... Uh, crown of the incorruptible or the imperishable and uh, and I want you to know the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and that spirit is resurrection life Jesus is resurrection life and the father wants that to come alive in you resurrection life and power Philippians 3.10 that you know him that you know Jesus in the resurrection power that you know that you could you can walk in that same authority in that same power with the right heart and that uh you know in philippians 3 10 it talks about not only knowing him the resurrection and the power but it also talks about something very beautiful it talks about that you what what does it say leslie uh, as far as sacrifice is there sacrifice there the next thing uh, um, okay, so Philippians 3.10, I want to know him, that is the Lord Jesus, inside and out. I want to experience the power of his resurrection and join in his sufferings, ah, shaped sacrifice. by his death, suffering shaped by his death, so that I may arrive safely at the, resur at the resurrection from the dead. Amen. So if that's the case, uh, that also means that uh, the, in that sacrifice, but also in that communion. Mm. 
You see, that's the communion. That's the, that's the sacraments of communion. That you, that you walk in the power of Jesus in resurrection life, but you also walk in the resurrection life with the Father, uh, but in Jesus as well through, through communion. Um, well, you got something there? Else? Well, I just, to... you know, I just want to go with like verse 12 to follow up because yeah. where, where he talks about, you know, like you're running this race, but you want, you want to get there and you want to, you want to know the Lord. You want to know Jesus inside and out and every expression and, and all, not even just about him, but it's knowing him. It's not knowing just about him, but it's really knowing him for who he is. But in verse 12, he, you know, he, he acknowledges, and I think we all can acknowledge I'm not there yet, nor have I become perfect, mm -hmm. but I am charging on to gain anything and everything the anointed one, Jesus, has in store for me, Don't not to give up, and nothing will stand in my way, because he has grabbed me and won't let me go. Amen. He has grabbed me Amen. and won't let me go. So it's, you hang on to Jesus, you hang on yeah. to him, and everything that he has in store for, for you, for me, and nothing will stand in my way. Why? Because he is all powerful. And he's grabbed me, he's grabbed you, mm -hmm. and he will not let you go. Mm -hmm. He will not let me go. No. He will not. Amen. And so that's why we, none of us have arrived. Mm -hmm. But this one thing I am doing, I'm leaving my old life behind, yep. putting everything on the line for this mission, for this purpose, and I'm sprinting towards that only Goal, to cross that line, to win the prize, and to hear God's call to resurrection life found exclusively in Jesus, the anointed. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus, DNA. Yeah. Abba Father, DNA. HSP. HSP? I've been selling that drug, you know, I, uh, <laughs> you know when I, down at Pigeon Park and down in uh, Vancouver there for a number of years. I was the I was the HSP drug dealer that, down there, and uh, I was I, I got to a place where, uh, you know, <laughs> those ugly people down there. Uh, when I talk about the pushers and the guys that were getting the the drugs to the people, they I built a relationship, and I would come in the middle of their deals, and I'd say I got HSP, and I'd give you a drug, and I'd give it to you for free. It's a lot better than his drug, and that guy said, Ah, he's just a Bible thumper. No, HSP is Holy Spirit power. We can get you off these drugs. And I'm and I'm talking to the dealer, uh, the drug drug dealer too. I'm get you. You know, God got God created a revival down down there. And, and, and now where I used to do that with the team, now there's a church down in that area. And anyway, I know. Mom, Leslie's getting back on the thing. But conditioning is an important thing here. And what Leslie was talking about is conditioning. You have to train for this. You've got to get your muscles, and you know, if you're a boxer, you got to, you, you know, you got to run the race or whatever the fight is. And if you're a worshiper, I want you to know you have to train like a worshiper because you're going to go into battle first. Because, like in, in Jehoshaphat, you know, the, the, the worshippers went out first into battle and they did the worshiping, and then and the army followed. Do, do you think those worshippers were not in shape? You know, they, you know, they. They knew what fasting was. They they knew what uh, it was to work out and and be ahead of the army of God. Well, worshipers, you're that head of the army of God, and I want you to know, uh, it's it's best way I can explain this to you if you can get a picture. There's a big big rock, a huge rock, and and a huge rock. You can't move it with any, with any with any uh, uh, kind of machinery known today. And you go there and you push up against that rock. And you push and you push and you push. And after about uh, three years, you got a little bit of muscles. After about uh, six years, you got more muscles. You got more determination. You're not quitting. And, the, and you keep pushing up against the rock. And after about 10, 20 years, you got lots of muscles. And, and by the time you get to 25, 30, and like where uh, Ray and Jean McLean are, after 39 years, you're in shape to take on the enemy. Do you understand? You've got to push up against the rock Jesus for a while and not give up. Okay, so that's okay. So that let's go to the next one. Um, does that make some sense? Uh, it's not easy. If it was, uh, if being a Christian was easy, I think a lot of the people that were doing things in, in the wrong way would do it. But it's not. It's it, it. It really takes some strength. It takes some meekness. It takes some mildness, humility, and strength. 
that I say that. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is the crown of rejoicing. Oh, isn't that cool? A crown of rejoicing. Do you know that there's no demon of joy? <laughs> I want you to know. Mockery is not this. Mockery is not part of this. This is a crown of rejoicing. Wow. Rejoicing. Can you just see Jesus jumping and dancing and celebrating in heaven? Crown of rejoicing. So let's read uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 17 to 19. We'll go to 20. 17 to 20? Yeah, 17 to 20. Okay. Crown of rejoicing. All right, so 1 Thessalonians 2, chapter 17 to 20. Or yeah. The verse, I mean. Yeah. Um, Brothers and sisters, we are like orphans, separated from you for a short time. In presence, yes, but not in heart. And we desperately desire to see your faces again. However, as much as we wanted to come to you, I, Paul, assure you we tried again and again. Satan thwarted our plans. For what is our true hope, our true joy, our victor's crown in all this? It is nothing if it isn't you standing before the Lord Jesus, the anointed, at his arrival. You are our glory. You are our joy. Amen. Joy. So, crown of rejoicing, like it's talking about hope. Uh, you know, First Peter chapter one, verse three, it talks about a living hope. Well, we know we've got a, a living faith in Jesus, and we know we got uh, living water in Jesus, and we got the living bread in Jesus. A well, living hope is important. So, the crown of rejoice, rejoicing. There's a hope. In, uh, there's there, there's a how can I say? There's a hope of eternity. There's there's a joy, and you know. Uh, you can be rejoicing during <laughs> the m most difficult times that you're going through because you're, you're not tied to the pain. You're, you're tied to the kingdom of heaven. So you're not being affected by the things in this world. So the crown of rejoicing is kind of cool in the sense that you are worshiping and rejoicing and dancing uh, during the most difficult times of your life and other... other. Does that sound like now? Huh. Does that sound like it could be a time that we could really rejoice now, eh, Tiffany? Uh, like she's a worship leader. I just love it when she worships. But a crown of rejoicing. And uh, so let's go to Habakkuk uh, chapter 3, verses 16 to 19. Because in Habakkuk, it's, 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 um, it's kind of interesting here, uh, the position of that. You got that, Leslie? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Habakkuk 3, um, verse 16 to 19. 19. I listened and began to feel sick with fear. My insides churned. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones. I stood there shaking. Now I wait quietly for the day of distress. I sit and wait for the time when disaster strikes those who attack my people. Yet even if the fig tree does not blossom and there are no grapes on the vines, if the olive trees fail to give fruit, and the fields produce no food, if the flocks die far from the fold, and there are no cattle in the stalls, then I will still rejoice <laughs> in the eternal. I will rejoice in the God who saves me. The eternal Lord is my strength. He has made my feet like the feet of a deer. He allows me to walk on high places. He is the one that allows us to walk on the high places. Amen. And not to sort of be under the circumstances, but we choose, we choose rather to rejoice and worship Him. And that takes us up and out of the pit, into those high places, so we Amen. can walk in in the just being with Him in His presence. Yeah, and and what you taught on a couple of weeks ago in regards to the tongue and and the breath of God and that type of thing, the crown of rejoice, how we. How we speak from our heart and through our tongue is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the fire of God will even get, you know, if, if our heart is right and the fire is right and the passion is right, you know, uh, uh, Jeremiah uh, 5, 14 talks about the breath of God and the fire of that coming through, which is pretty cool. So in that rejoicing, there's a lot of fire. And uh, so, you know, Resurrection Life Ministry, uh, you know, we kind of birthed in 1990 and, and a scripture was given to us and I'm going to read it out, Isaiah 61, uh, 1 to 4. And I believe that was a prophetic word for us uh, back then. And uh, we know that we know that the, the Lord gave us that name, Resurrection Life, prophetically. Um, and it's kind of interesting when we ran into 
our friends in Tanzania, uh, uh, Pastor Esther up there, um, when I saw her in uh, June this year, you know, there's their their ministry three to five uh, five years ago all started under the same scripture, Isaiah 61, 1 to 4, in regards to, it said, the spirit of the Lord of God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has anointed me. And when you know the Lord has anointed you, you can rejoice through anything. You can go through anything. So it says, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings. We keep preach the good news to the poor. And the poor are those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. When you look at uh, Paul speaking about the poor, he's talking about the poor that are in Jerusalem at the time, not because they're hungry, but they don't know the Lord. They're, they're still following the, the wrong doctrine. But anybody that's poor is not in the right... Well, without Jesus. Without Jesus. Okay. So then it says here, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives, to set the captives free. And we're going to get back to that in a minute, but to liberty and to set the, to set the prisoners free and, to, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. We've, we've been, so much scripture in the last little, uh, five years and in regards to bondage, breaking the bondage and breaking the chains and breaking out of prison. Well, this is the time. This is the decade. This is pay. God wants this to happen for everybody in regards to God's breath. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. You know, the, hey, the Lord is bringing his vengeance down upon this, this earth right now. And he is a jealous God and he is standing at the, the doorpost of his temple and he is jealous for his people and he's jealous for his altar. So get everything in order. And, and then it says here uh to con console those who mourn in zion in, in other words the mountain of worship those who are worshiping those worshipers and to give give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning so the, the crown of rejoicing can come through the most difficult time this is this is our time the next decade this is going to be the greatest time of revival this is going to be the greatest time of people coming to know the lord jesus christ and he's going to use uh, no-name people. He's going to use people that's got a name and got a ministry. But he's going to be using those who have a poor, how can I say, they, they were poor at one time, but they're so, how can I say, wealthy and healthy and whatever because they know the Lord Jesus Christ and they want to share it because it's, it, it, it's so priceless and so beautiful. So that's, that's the decade we're going into. So, and they go a little, you know, so the oil of joy you know, the oil of joy for morning. So if you need a cup of that right now, well, say, Lord, pour a cup of oil down upon me and let just, we're Psalm 133. Let it pour down from the top of my head. Let it pour over my hair, over my head. And my, if you have a beard, fine. If you don't, uh, guy or gal, let it pour down right to your feet and get soaked in it because you got to be soaked in the anointing. Because if you're soaked in the anointing, when the fire of God comes to you, whoosh, fire, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to be, what do you call that thing? The prime the pump? Hey, mm -hmm. we talked about that. You, you got, you're so full of the Holy Spirit. You're so full of uh, the things that God is ready to move on you. You don't have to pump up because you're all, you're full. And the fire of God that comes to you, goes, whoosh. <laughs> you can't be on empty or a quarter of a tank. You got to be full. You got to be, are you full? Are you flowing over? This is the decade that God wants to have a double portion, 2020 double blessing. He wants you to be flowing over. So you're so ready for the fire and the anointing. And to give them beauty for ashes and the oil of more joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Let's kick that spirit of heaviness out of your area, out of your city, out of your church. The crown of rejoicing is, is the end, you know, like is one thing but let's get rid of that heaviness the spirit of heaviness that they may be called what trees of righteousness trees of righteousness and the planting of our lord that he may be glorified that he may be glorified okay so uh psalm 30 verses 11 and 12 can you uh mm -hmm. psalm 30 verses 11 and 12 yep. you got it I will in a minute. Yeah. Um, just I, I really like the the um, just another lens looking through 
through this translation in the, the voice translation, Isaiah 61, 1 to 4 or 1 to 3. And so it, it's kind of cool because it highlights uh, you know, some more there. The Spirit of the Lord, the Eternal, is on me. He's on me. He's on you. The Lord has appointed me for a special purpose. He's got a special purpose for each and every one of us. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to repair broken hearts. So many people with broken hearts have been disappointed. Um, you know, there's been so much, but broken hearts. And to declare to those who are held captive and bound in prison by fear, by whatever, whatever it is that's keeping people locked up, be free from your imprisonment. So we can speak the word. The word says, be free from your imprisonment. So I can say, be free from your imprisonment. Amen. And he has sent me to announce the year of Jubilee, the season of the eternal's favor. For our enemies, it will be like a day of wrath, God's wrath. For those who mourn, it will be a time of comfort. For those who grieve over Zion, as for those who grieve over Zion, rather, and God has sent me to give them a beautiful crown. So he sent Jesus, really. God has sent the Lord Jesus to, to give each and every one a beautiful crown in exchange for ashes. So when our lives are in a heap of mess and we've been burned like crispy critters mm -hmm. because of life and the hard times, he, God Almighty, will give a beautiful crown in exchange for those ashes to anoint each one, to anoint them with gladness instead of sorrow, to wrap them in victory. So he figured, like wrapped in victory, wrapped in joy, and wrapped in praise instead of depression and sadness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go to the mind. Yeah, depression. Yeah. Um, people will call them magnificent, like great and towering mm -hmm. trees, standing for what is right. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, we take the stand for what is right. Mm -hmm. And they stand to the glory of the eternal who planted them. Mm -hmm. So it's to bring glory. To the eternal one. Amen. I want to slip in. Mm -hmm. uh, Go ahead. We're in rejoicing here. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you uh, flip it back and you want to see you? Or? Well, they don't need to see me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if they can hear me, that's all they need. Yeah. Uh, rejoicing. For those who are not sure what rejoicing looks like in the New Testament, Luke chapter 10, verse 21 Absolutely. It says, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. Mm. Rejoice in Greek there is a compound word, of, a word that means much, mm -hmm. and to leap for joy, to yeah. leap and yes. spin around for That's joy. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So you don't need to be shy about expressing your joy physically, leaping and jumping for joy. I mean... Jesus did it. I mean, that's... Yes, he did. Would we know his joy? That's right. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. Yes, come back. I, I just... I want you to know that crown of rejoicing, you know, um, there are... <clears throat> there's some other teaching. We're not doing it today, but there's going to be some other teaching we're going to be talking about in regards to the anointing oil and also the, the, the new wine and that type of thing with all that's going to be about. But if you can imagine this anointing oil, the best anointing... Christ is the anointed one. He is the anointing, Christ. You know, so uh, in Isaiah 61, 1 to 2, we talk, it talks about, uh, and George uh, from uh, Fiji, you know, uh, get him to preach on this because he, he's, he's been through all this preaching in regards to the four prisons, and I'm going to do that another day too, but as far as the four prisons of captivity. But one of the prisons that gets broken, and um, uh, Micah 2, verse 13, where it says, there, there's such a, how can I say, a, a breaker anointing that comes in and smashes and destroys the, you know, it can't be, if something's uh, uh, broken to a point that can be repaired, no, it has to be completely demolished and gone. So in Isaiah 10, 27, you know, uh, the, the anointing that smashes uh, the, the, how can I say, the, anything that is keeping you in bondage or, or keeping you tied up, it has to be, those chains have to be destroyed so they can't be repaired and put around you again. So I want you to get this because part of this anointed one is the Creole. The, the Creole, wow, the Christ, the Creole. Okay, 
How many have been anointed? Where the God, uh, t- where you, you go up and you get anointed and anointing oil on you. Isn't that beautiful, the time? You know, when they get the anointing oil. But th- what we're talking about here in this particular situation, not only is the anointing uh, being poured upon you, it's being rubbed into you. It's being rubbed in. I can't put new wine into an old wineskin or else it would burst. In other words, he's getting the new wineskins and he's pouring the he's pouring the wine on the inside of it, but he has to prepare the wineskin for a unbelievable a pouring out of the anointing that you have to how can I say contain within you. So he's pouring on this anointing, the same anointing. He's pouring it on, but then he's rubbing it in. He's rubbing it in. He's preparing you. Are you being prepared? Do you feel like you've been preparing, been prepared for the last 10 years? I, if you've been going after this, or if it's only been for a year, God's rubbing in the anointing to you. So you know his touch. You know the anointing. And, he's gonna, and so this next 10 years of pain, we have, we're, we're ready because we, he's going to pour in and we're going to pour out. And he doesn't have to worry about our wineskins bursting or he doesn't have to worry about our, our, our wineskins tearing or anything like that because we're prepared. He's preparing his bride. The Creo, the anointing, the Christ, the anointed one. This is the time and season for this. So uh, one of the prisons that, that gets destroyed in, in, in Isaiah uh, chapter uh, uh, 61 there it says it talks about uh, those who are spiritually deaf and blind. Okay, so what the enemy's been trying to do is in the past, to, so your eyes do not see, so you're spirit, spiritually blind and you're spiritually deaf not to hear the word of God. So God is pouring in the oil and the wine. He's pouring in the oil and wine so your eyes can see like the eagle. You can be 20,000 feet up in spot. And he's getting your ears to hear this. So you can hear the still small voice of God. So when the enemy is roaring and causing all these different things that Elijah had to go through. Well, I want you to understand. Uh, Elijah or Elijah is uh, it's going to be a good day. Because we'll still hear the small voice of God regardless of how much the difficulty are. Okay, go ahead, uh, Leslie. On. Here we go for Psalm 30, verses 11 and 12. And it says, and you did it. You turned my deepest pains into joyful dancing. You stripped off my dark clothing and covered me with joyful light. You have restored my honor. My heart is ready to explode, to erupt in new songs. It's impossible to keep quiet. The oh. eternal one, my God, my life giver, I will thank you forever. Mm-hmm. So in the preparation, you know, we talked about the crown of rejoicing. If, if you are getting into a place and understanding that um, your character has become such the character of Jesus, such the character of the Father and the Holy Spirit, that you're, that you're being that, when you're talking or ministering to other people, it, it comes into a place where people are immediately comfortable in regards to receiving what you have because they're, it says the Father is preparing their heart. And you're part of the preparation. You are part of the preparation for that. Because he's been rubbing in and getting out all the what? Whatever's in the skin or the dirt or whatever it is, the abrasions, he's getting it out. So I I don't know if you've ever played any baseball and you've had a mitt. You've got to work that mitt in. I was a catcher for a lot of years. And I wanted that I wanted the mitt strong but flexible and pliable. So I could whatever way I had to move to get that ball, I could get it. So I want you to know whatever way God has to move you, you have to be able to move quickly and for purpose, for his plan, not yours. Okay? Philippians 4.4, um, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. You know, a part of the crown of rejoicing is that uh, 
you know, it's pretty hard for you to have a bad day because you're always got a smile on your face. I, you know, I, I, I got some people that I know that, you know, uh, Ace Clark is a real buddy and he would always talk about his, his, his uh, mother and she, oh, and she would burn the turkey and, and she, oh, praise the Lord, I burned the turkey. You know, it didn't matter what happened. Praise the Lord. You know, nothing is going to affect my position or who I am in place of my rejoicing. There are some people like that. <clears throat> You know, I know that's radical. I know it's extreme. But I want you to know there's all kinds of exports out there. Mm -hmm. All kinds of things that exceed what normal people can do. You have to exceed this more than a normal person. Mm -hmm. Because you are a son. You are a daughter of God. And you are X. Better than the enemy or anybody else. Mm. And he's preparing you for this. So that you can rejoice through whatever the warfare is. <clears throat> and you can laugh in the enemy. You go read Psalm chapter 2 and it talks about how God just <laughs>, laughs. He's gonna, You're going to do what to my son? You're going to do what to my daughter? You don't have no authority. Once you understand the word and who the authority is in you, on you, and around you. <clears throat> wow. Are you a rejoicing person? Amen. Amen. So let's go to uh, the crown of righteousness. And... Um, uh, I want you to, was there any prison breaks there in regards to uh, the crown of rejoicing? <laughs> I'm no longer in my, what, my pity. Uh, are you out of your, uh, what do you call that place? That pity, uh, what do you call it? Party. Pity parlor? Pity party. pit? Party. Huh? Party. <laughs> well, it's a pit. It's yeah. a pit. Yeah. You go in the pit, pity you party. find other people that's fallen in the pit with, with like <clears throat> pityness, and they all go in there and you grumble and complain. And uh, I want you to know, God doesn't like that murmuring and complaining. Mm -hmm. Get out of the pit. Start rejoicing. <clears throat> Start your own rejoicing club. Get in there and rejoice. Read the word of God. Know the Rathma, and you are in control, right? No, the tail does not wag the dog. Mm. Mm. You can't let the enemy wag you. Mm. You take authority, and you tell him no. Colossians 2, 9, and 10, it says, All authority was given to <clears throat> the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> by the Father in heaven. You can go back to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 20, 21, and read that. <coughs> but Colossians 2, 9 and 10, it says, then he gave it to us. Do you understand that? He gave us all power and authority. He's in different scriptures. We have it. Are you using it? What are you saving it for? Just put it into your crown of rejoicing and laugh at the enemy. Laugh at what it, and push through because you're prepared. He's been rubbing in for a while. He's not rubbing in to create difficulty in your life. He's rubbing in and rubbing out the difficulty in your life. Does that make sense? Hmm. Okay. Crown of righteousness. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse uh, 6 to 8. <coughs> hey, how's that working? How's that ever getting some understanding to this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 to 8. Yes, uh, okay. crown of righteousness. Okay. For I am already being poured out, and the last drops of this drink offering are all that remain. It's almost time for me to leave. I have fought the good fight. I have stayed on course and finished the race, and through it all, I have kept believing. I look forward to what's in store for me, a crown of righteousness that the Lord, the always right and just judge, will give me that day. But it is not only for me, but for all those who love and long for his appearing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Love and long for his what? Appearing. Appearing. Now, what's, what's that talking about for his appearing? His manifested presence or is... His return. His return. Oh, so the crown of righteousness are those people who are what? Vigilant and being prepared for the Lord's return in every part of their life and um, so we're I told you we're in 5780 this is uh, pay uh, the time of God's breath being blowed out but also it's part of resurrection life it's part of the shofar being blown in victory <laughs> what do you think hey Vincent <laughs> uh, you know Vincent Poole from Houston you know, the blowing of the shofar, 
is part of this crown of righteousness that we're ready and we're preparing. We're, we're, we're ready and prepared in regards to the Lord's return and we're doing the battle and we're going forth with the shofar. You know, some people don't even like the sound of the shofar. I wonder, do you, do you think the enemy, do you think the enemy likes the sound of the shofar? Mm -hmm. No, I just lost my spot there. Anyway, uh, that happens. Um, no, uh, sorry. So I'll find it. So the shofar, you know, uh, it, you know, it, it, this coming back, uh, this coming back of the shofar, it, 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 there's another thing that's part of this. It's the fruit, there's a fruit of, of fragrance and peace. The fragrance of Jesus is part of this whole thing as well. Because the breath of God, okay, and the shofar being blown, uh, the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of praise, uh, you know, and when you read in uh, uh, Second Chronicles uh, 7, 1 to 3, it talks about that beautiful aroma, that aroma offering that, uh, that is going up to, <clears throat> to the Father that's pleasing unto him. So your sacrifice of praise, that, that is part of this too. In other words, you're going through tough times and you're battling through and you have the sacrifice of praise and you are proclaiming and declaring and prophesying and worshiping. Uh, and it's a sweet fragrance unto, unto, unto the Father. It's a sweet fragrance unto Jesus and the Holy Spirit within you. So um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing that uh, th this is. Now, can you, can you uh, we're going to go to the crown of life, uh, which is Psalm 36.9. And I got to go back because I hit my finger, hit the wrong thing, of course. And I will find this. But uh, you, can you read uh, <clears throat> Psalm 36 9? Okay. All right. So, Psalm 36, verse 9. And it says, You have the fountain of life that quenches our thirst. Mm -hmm. Your light has opened our eyes and awakened our souls. Okay. Mm -hmm crown of life so when you read from uh fountain, verse yeah the fountain, fountain of life fountain of life but, but, but you read from eight, verse 8 to verse 10 read uh -huh. the whole thing sure but the focus with nine okay so in your house they eat and are full at your table talking about the lord's table mm -hmm. they drink from the river of your overflowing kindness you have the fountain of life that quenches our thirst and your light has opened our eyes and awakened our souls May your love continue to grow deeply in the lives of all who know you. May your salvation reach every heart committed to do right. You know, there's prayer if ever you heard it. Mm -hmm. You know, how, that's how the Lord pray for us and, and how we pray, can pray for one another and for others out there. May your love, so may the love of the Father continue to grow deeply in the lives of all who know you. May your salvation, may, the, may your salvation, God, reach every heart committed to do right hearts may be committed and want to do right but don't know how mm -hmm. but it's through the salvation of jesus that that comes okay mm -hmm. so here with the with the uh we'll go to james chapter 1 verse 12 mm -hmm. and it's talking about how the how blessed is a man that endures what endures what uh temptation uh this and, and also what it what we have to do when we how we walk and how we step in this world uh, there's always temptation when when jesus was baptized you know he he was put into a place of temptation for 40 days and uh and it was right from the devil himself and so the crown of life is one of those things that we just read about you know we, we you know you stand in the light you receive more light you drink from the river of delights you you uh, drink from the fountain of you know, there's so many wonderful things that we are so blessed about but the enemy is is coming in to test you into and trials and tribulations during this whole thing like jesus was in, in the um, in the desert so you, we have to know the word of god because jesus spoke the word of god back in each one of those tests are you prepared for the rathma, the word of God, to come back? So uh, let's look at uh, uh, James chapter 1, verse 12, and anything else is around that. Okay. And, um, okay, so James 1, verse 12, it says, Happy is the person who can hold up under the trials of life. So it's holding up under the... But, mm -hmm. 
there's happy for that person. <laughs> but it's like, man, holding up under the trials of life. At the right time, he'll know God's sweet approval and will be crowned with life. As God has promised, the crown awaits all who love him. Not just a few, but all who love him. Okay, so part of the wrath material... <clears throat> I'm, I, I'm being really challenged here. So part of the Rathma t uh, teaching here is um, the crown of life, the way uh, Jesus went through um, uh, those, uh, those difficulties. First, it's going to come temptation. So you're going to, so 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 3 to 5. In other words, <clears throat> you know, whatever our thoughts are, we have to control, right? So Leslie's going to read 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. So first of all, uh, Jesus was tempted. So there is a temptation that comes first. The next thing that's happened, are we going to step into desire? Now, we haven't committed a sin yet, but based on our flesh or based on whatever, what choice are we going to make based on desire? And the third thing is, if we do make the wrong decision or the wrong choice and step into sin, that means repentance is the way out. How many places right now need repentance in their life, whether it's a person, a church, a nation, whatever it is, because temptation, desire, greed, whatever, went into sin, and many people were killed because of nations fighting or whatever, and, uh, and, and in that sin, there's, there's got to be repentance. Now, <clears throat> once you get to that place of sin, and you don't repent, you go into a place where it's almost like you're you have no feelings in regards to the things around you and you're, you're like you're immune to it and it's like a, a dead man walking and I, I want you to know the enemy has been doing uh, 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 in the last 20 years he's been uh, how could I say desensitizing everybody with movies and these games and all these type of things where there's killing all the time all the time all the time all the all, all it becomes normal and and it doesn't bother you anymore so we cannot be descent, we can't desensitize our feelings into a place of a spirit of error and sin. If we go in there, it's going to be very hard to get back. So, so this crown of life, you know, we have to take every thought captive. So uh, Leslie is going to read 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. If you've got anybody that's got, going through issues with their mind and decisions, do a, uh, do a card up. And in that card, give them this scripture. Okay? Go ahead, Leslie. Uh-huh. For though we walk in the world, we do not fight according to the war world's rules of warfare. The weapons of the war we're fighting are not of this world, but are powered by God and effective at tearing down the strongholds that are erected against his truth. We are demolishing arguments and ideas, every high and mighty philosophy that pits itself against the knowledge of the one true God. There's not many gods, one true God. Mm. We are taking prisoners of every thought, every emotion, and subduing them into obedience to the anointed one. Amen. And standing up under temptation is a difficult thing. And uh, uh, Revelations 2.10 uh, says here, and now we're talking about the persecuted church. And it says, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. How many, uh, you know, we're, we're praying right now because we got a thing over the Facebook that there's going to be a number of pastors uh, killed in, in, in Nigeria or, or somewhere, you know, in different places of the, because the enemy is persecuting. So here it says, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. It's happening in China. Big time. That you may be tested. And you, and you will have tribulation. You'll have tribulation. My, my Bible says 10 days. I don't know what your Bible says. In other words, you, you're going to have you're going to go into some difficult things. You're going to have to handle it for ten days in your flesh and body and spirit. And then it says, "Be faithful unto death. Be faithful unto death. Faithful, faith, believing in the heart and speaking through the mouth. You know, you have eternity. 
resurrection life in you until death. And I will and I will give you the crown of life. I will give you the crown of life. So all these mar martyrs that have happened in the last 10 years for all all time. And it's going to it's going intensi to intensify itself because the devil knows time is short because heaven is coming down and crushing third heaven is crushing the second heaven to the to earth. And the devil knows his time is short, so he's fighting everything he can do to create as much difficulty that he can. So you've got to know your authority, and you've got to be ready to... You've been pushing up against the rock. You've been prepared. You've been the anointing. You've got to know the word and stand up. You've got to be a worshiper, and, you, and you've got to be able to uh, love the unlovable, even through this whole thing, because the people that do this to you, they don't know. And you, you've got to be able to share the word with them. So... Uh, going back to uh, James chapter uh, 1 verse 12 again. Mm. So let's just refortify that um, to understand the importance of being patient under trial. Okay? Uh, it says, fear nothing that you are about to suffer. Dismiss your uh, dreadful fears. Dismiss those dreadful fears. And, uh, you know, it's a t it, yeah, it's going to be a tough thing. And there's a lot of people that have gone through it. Some of you haven't. But we got to pray for those people going through it. Because those 10 days, you know, uh, when Daniel, when he prayed for 21 days, and it, and it, and it took uh, Michael and Gabriel that long to get there. So, and it says in the Word of God, pray for 10 days, they need it. Go ahead. So you want um, verse 12 again? James yeah, 12, 1, 12, 12 and 13. 12 and 13 yeah. So yeah, so verse 12 says, Happy is the person who can hold up under the trials of life. And at the right time, he'll know God's sweet approval and will be crowned with life. As God has promised, the crown awaits all who love him. Verse 13, no one who is tempted should ever be confused and say that God is testing him. The one who created us is free from evil and can't be tempted, so he does not tempt anyone. When a person, 14, 15 maybe? Go ahead. Yeah. When a person is carried away with desire, lured by lust, and when desire becomes the focus and takes control, it gives birth to sin. Then when sin becomes fully grown, it produces death. And that would be a spiritual death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, and with that, <clears throat> Revelations 3, 10 and 11, <clears throat> these scriptures, you, you need to go over them. Like these, I want you to know, these five crowns, you, you, it, it, we can't earn them, but I want you to know the process to go through it is an important thing to know. Your character and what you can't get through and, can't, and the things you can't get through, ask the Lord to give you more strength because he's not going to give you any more that you can't handle. But it's important to know the process what maybe other people are going through. So uh, 3, uh, 10 and 11. In Revelation. Revelation chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, it says, Because you have kept my commandments to persevere. Now he's talking to the faithful church. He says, Now that you've kept my commandments to, uh, to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which will, which shall come upon the whole world. You think we're going to see that during the time of pay five seven eight zero this next ten this next decade this next ten uh, ten years? Uh, well, it could be, and if it is, it says the hour of trial, which will shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. That's us. Be behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast. Hold fast. What you have that no one may take your crown. No one will take your crown. In other words, do not compromise your position of who you are in Christ because of pleasures, because of where you've come back, because you are going to be tested. You're, there's going to be the temptation. There's going to be the desire. And maybe you'll go into sin. Repent before it goes too deep. Because if you go too deep, well, you're going to walk into a place where you're going to fall asleep. Like It, it says that when you're uh, taking communion, many of you are going to fall asleep because you're taking communion unworthily, because you're taking communion and not getting rid of the sin. You're not asking for forgiveness. If that you you you'll become warped. You can't. And there's many churches, many people like that now. You've got to get to the purity, and that's uh, that's why it's the process is so important to get out of these prisons.
Because if we get out of the prisons, we can break through into God's presence now mm. in this decade. We want to be in his presence now. What is, it, what is it you have for me, Lord? What is it that you would have me do? And if he says, well done, good and faithful servant, oh, wow, that's a good one. Mm. So, you got to know his word. You've got to know the wrath. You've got to know how to apply it. You've got to know how it The living word, John 1, uh, John chapter 1, verse, the living word within you, you've got to know all that. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, Hebrews 13, uh, verse 17. Can you get that, uh, Leslie? So Hebrews 13, verse 17. Yeah. Listen to your leaders and submit to their authority over the community. For they are on constant watch to protect your souls. And someday they must give account. Give okay. them reason to be joyful and not to regret their duty. For that will be of no good to you. Oh my goodness. That scripture there is taking us into the crown of glory. The fifth crown. Okay. So we've... we've We've gone through uh, the crown of uh, incorruptible and we've gone through the crown of rejoicing and the crown of righteousness and the crown of life. Now the crown of glory. Um, you know, we've we got to be at a place that we obey those that God has put over us. And uh, Hebrews 13 says, we've got to be accountable. We've got to be in order. We've got to be an arrow going one way. And, uh, <clears throat> and we've got to be obedient. So if we, 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, verse 4. Can you get that one, Leslie? This is about the crown of glory. And, uh, and it says, uh, I warn by counsel the elders among you as fellow elders, as an eyewitness, call to testify of the suffering of the Messiah, of Jesus, as well as the, sh as the share of the splendid, glorious honor that is to be revealed and disclosed and unfolded Oh. In other words, you're going to get a complete understanding of this. Go ahead, uh, Leslie. Okay. And I, yeah, I'm going to just take, um, so it's First Peter chapter 5. Verse, yeah, and you, you say it's verse 3? Uh, 4. 4. Or anything around it. You know, okay, I'm going to start actually verse 2. Okay. And it says, and when you shepherd the flock, this is speaking to the elders or to those who were are the ones that will be giving account for the, for the, for the lives that they're watching over. Um, when you shepherd the flock God has given you, watch over them not because you have to, but because you want to. For this is how God would want it, not because you're being compensated somehow, but because you are eager to watch over them. Don't lead them as if you were a dictator, but lead your flock by example. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will be crowned with honor that will shine brightly forever. Wow. In other words, those who are put into a position of, authority. let's say, leadership, authority, uh, you know, the fivefold, you know, you, like the fivefold ministry, the, the apostle, the prophet, you know, is part of this as well, and the evangelist and, and, and the teacher and the pastor. You know, uh, there's all kinds of, you know, we're hooked into Jesus on that, and, it, and it's Jesus that created the fivefold ministry. And we're accountable to him. And he, you know, he loves his sheep. You know, we, when he talked to Peter, he, you know, in, in, in John there, he says, he says, you know, love my sheep, feed my sheep. You know, he clean my sheep, love them, love them. And, and, and he always asked Peter, will you do this? And, and, and Peter got to the place of being indignant. He says, of course I will. You know I will. He says, no, I, I, you need to say it. You need to confess it. You need to know that those are my sheep, not yours. Mm -hmm. And you gotta love them, even though they stink sometimes. <laughs> and, and I want you to know, sometimes sheep bite. Sometimes they butt. And you know, sometimes they just don't want to go where you want to go. Do you understand? Probably, it's God's got. You've got to be a shepherd that they know your voice and they trust you and love you. Amen. So, <clears throat> let's go to Luke uh, chapter twelve, thirty-four, because it, it's. You cannot rule with a, you know, and that's part of the altar that I was talking about. If, if you're making the altar of God yours and you're, 
manipulating the altar for your purpose and you're manipulating God's beloved for your purpose. Mm -hmm. Stop it! You can't not go before God right now and say, I did not know. Nobody ever told me that I was doing this. The Holy Spirit's telling you now right inside, repent. Now, I have said this in different nations and, and I've uh, to all kinds of leaders at, at pastors' conferences and bishops and, and when the Holy Spirit comes down just like an arrow right now, you stop it and you repent. You stop manipulating God's purpose for your plan and for your income and for your glory and for your ministry. Stop it. Release it. Repent. And you want something? You better tell somebody about it. Because you'll go back to it. You need to be accountable. God made you strong with a forehead like flint, but he also knows your weaknesses. And so does the enemy. Don't let pride stop you from repenting. And get, get, get in, whether it's your church, whether it's uh, other uh, pastors in the community, it's got a people that know you. Especially, and your wife and kids. Stop it. Because you're probably manipulating them the same way. Because that manipulation is the same thing as reviling, as it says in 1 Samuel uh, chapter uh, 15, verses 22-23. You know, it, it says, okay, it says what? Sac sacrifice over obedience or obedience over sacrifice? If you're sacrificing to do the things for God and you're not being obedient, stop it. Rebellion is as witchcraft. Divination, manipulation. If you're allowing that manipulation, that divination in you to manipulate others, to build the kingdom that you want, stop it because it's, it's, it's going to burn up. You're a false teacher, false prophet. God wants you in order for his sheep. And especially in the next one, it says insubordination is idolatry. In other words, your insubordination. What? What's that insubordination? Your defiance on not being obedient You've taken God off the, off the throne in your heart, kicked him out, and you're sitting there, and you're being that divination. Repent. Do you want it any clearer than that? There's a crown of glory for those that do it right. There's, you can't earn it, and but if you're in that place where you're defiling God's most beloved, stop it. And for those that are doing it right, bless you, bless you. Okay, for the scripture. Uh, so Luke 12, verse 34. Yeah. And it says, your treasure will be stored in the heavens. And since your treasure is there, your heart will be lodged there as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Does that make sense? Where your heart and your treasure are together, <laughs> it seems like God is there too. Well, there's a, you know, in 33, in the, you know, the, like a 33B. Yeah. yeah. And it says you can have a different kind of savings plan. One that never depreciates. One that never defaults. One that can't be plundered by crooks or destroyed by natural calamities. And then your treasure will be stored in the heavens. Since your treasure is there, your heart will be lodged there as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So just before I go to the next one. John chapter 12, verse 26. I know we're getting, we're, how do you like this raphma? You know, this is beautiful because you can, if you can't get it all right now, you can go back and share it again and have a video watch party or whatever. But if this is for you, you have a prison break. These, these crowns that I'm talking about, you know, the Lord's going to decide who gets those. Just be David and repent and get your heart right. Well, they're, they're available for all people. All people. Yeah. But I'm just saying, yeah. you know, I'm doing this teaching. It's not for the crown, it's for the process. And, and hopefully to help you at some point during this teaching for the prison breaks. And I'm going to kind of wind up on the prison breaks at the end here. But, okay, so um, in Revelation... Are uh, you were John 12? John 12, uh, 26. Um, I love this because right now if I bring this in and say, okay... John 12, 26. It, it, it's it's kind of like a love song. Can I, If I could sing really nice, I would sing. And George is saying, no, no, don't sing. <laughs> He's in Fiji right now. He's a day ahead of us. 
And those in Africa are saying, sing, sing, sing. We like your voice. <laughs> and those in, uh, in India, they love it too. Hey, eh? Pastor Sunil. But uh, I want you to know John 12, 26. Get that scripture right. Because it says where, where the servant of God is, where his, serve, where his son is, so shall I also be. Jesus will be where his son and daughter are because the hearts are right. Do you want to read it? Uh, what have you got there? So John 12, verse 26, it yeah. says, Anyone who serves me, that is Jesus, must follow my path. Anyone who serves me will want to be where I am, and he will be honored by the Father. You'll be honored by the Father. Mm -hmm. So if, if you can kind of keep it halfway, and honored by the Father, it says, it, it's, it's proskuneo in the Greek. And it, I don't know if you've got us here, but mm -hmm. the Father actually kisses the hand and honors you, a son and daughter, that's serving the Son. How awesome is that? Mm -hmm. To do it with a pure heart, to know the Father is honoring you. Mm. And he kisses your hand. You know, that's a, it's, that's a love, that's a love song. That's a love action. That's not a Romeo and Juliet thing that's a, that's a facade. That's, this is real. The father wants to honor those sons and daughters, those children of God that grow up to be a son and a daughter of the Most High, to serve the son. Huh. <sighs> You know, I just want the kiss from the Father. I just want, the Lord, I just want to hear the word good and faithful servant. Some people say, I just want to get in. I just want to sneak in by the skin of my teeth. No, that's not. No, you got time on this kingdom of this earth right now to advance the kingdom of God because heaven's coming down. Change your heart. Go 100%. Not three or ten or fifteen or ninety. Give it. So um, let's go to uh, uh, Revelations two twenty five to twenty six. And again, here I'm speaking about the persecuted church. But you know, I've talked about the persecuted church. I've talked about the faithful church. Right now, uh, this is talking to. The corrupt church. In other words, all right, there's a correction coming in here to the corrupt church. And it says, but, be, but, but hold fast what you have till I come. That he who overcomes and keeps my words until the end, until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Now, when you, you, you go back, I, I don't want to read all of chapter 2, verses 18 to 29, but that's the red print where Jesus is talking to the corrupt church. But out of the corrupt church, <laughs> there are going to be some awesome people serving him <laughs> because they're going to get it right. Right at the end, you get it right. Repentance is a good thing. David, he was prophet, priest, and king, and he messed up all the time but he got it right because he had repented heart and he and he he finished well <laughs> he finished well <laughs> you know i want you to know he killed the giant now if he hadn't killed that giant you know uh maybe we'd still all be in babylon so you know in his youth he did some good stuff and he did all the way through right now i mentioned that one of the greatest things we're fighting is that seduction and we got to cut off that snake of divination the python spirit of pythos the same thing that paul had to get rid of you know when he was in acts chapter uh 16 and that you know and that woman was mocking him but he thought it was praise but only for a moment and that we have to have discernment for matthew 24 24 says Matthew 24, 24. You read 24. We're in Matthew 24 right now. But 24, verse 24 talks about only the elect would be deceived if it were possible. So those who have the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit. You don't have knowledge. You don't have head knowledge. You've got to have a worshiper's heart. You've got to have the Holy Spirit on fire within you. 
You will not be deceived. This seduction that's going to happen in the next 10 years is going to seduce all governments and businesses and, and corrupt the church and corrupt uh, as much as it can in the seduction of what it is. You have to be awake to it. And you have to cut the head off it. Just as David cut the head off of Goliath, you've got to cut the head off this python spirit. You've got to, get, you've got to take it out in the spirit. I see it. And I'm prophesying it right now. The spirit of seduction. Yeah, there's a, you know, there's, you know, we got uh, principalities and we've got uh, all those things, the Prince of per Persia and all that kind of stuff. It's everywhere. But I want you to know that that spirit of seduction. <clears throat> Anything that seduction you do to get your flesh, it's going to do it. So you better, you better get the wrinkles out. God is pouring out his anointing. He's pouring out Joel chapter 2. He's pouring his anointing. He's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. And, there's, and upon the just and the unjust. And I want you to know those who are unjust, hopefully they're going to be like these people in, in Revelations uh, chapter 2, 25 and 26. Get it right and go for God. But those who so pr prostitute their flesh and stay in prison, they are going to, how could I say, crucify the church. They're going to, the same thing that Paul did and justified because he was seduced by that spirit this, uh, uh, and the spirit of Amalek. They are, they're going to, that's going rapid and raging now, they're just killing Christians in other nations. The enemy wants to bring it over all nations. But we have to fight back. We have to be that young David. We have to be that warrior and cut that python head off of seduction. Can you read Revelations 3, Reve 11, 13, oh, 11 to 13? Oh, Revelation 3. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Revelations 3, 11 to 13. Okay. Oh, okay. And it says, I will soon return. Hold tight to what you have so that no one can take away your victor's wreath. As for the one who conquers through faithfulness even unto death, I will plant that person as a pillar in the temple of my God, and that person will never have to leave the presence of God. Moreover, I will inscribe this person with the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, New Jerusalem, which descends out of heaven from my God and my own new name. And in verse 13 it says, Let the person who is able to hear, listen to and follow what the Spirit proclaims, to all the churches. Mm -hmm. To all the churches, all the ministries. If you can just turn that back and if you can just set up Hebrews 13, 17 again, mm -hmm. where we started with the crown of glory. <clears throat> Declare his glory. Declare his glory in every service, in every seminar, in every, uh, the burn that we're going to be doing <clears throat> that's happening here in, uh, on Saturday. But declare his glory. It's all about him. Fall deeply, deeply, passionately in love with him. And if there's anything in you, anything in you, as I said in Psalm 90, verse 8, if there's anything that's hidden in darkness, in the prison of your heart, that you have been maybe molested as a child or or committed some other sin or or there's some interdenomination, inter what would you call it? Uh, a, a sin from the past. Generational. Intergenerational sin. Let the Lord, let the Holy Spirit reveal it to you now so you can cut it off and be free of it. Just as Jesus cursed the fig tree and it dried up from the roots, I, pr I pray right now, whatever that intergenerational sin is, it is cut off and it dries up from the roots no longer to affect you or your children or your children's children. And I speak freedom for you and your family and I pray that you go back to if your other fathers and, and grandfathers are alive, to speak that to them in life. And if they're not, speak it to the, uh, speak it to the world. Speak it to, speak it to the air. Ezekiel's bones. Speak to the bones. Speak to the wind. Prophesy to it. Get rid of that. We've got to declare his glory and, and nothing shall stop it. We are worshipers first. Sons and daughters of the Most High. Zion. 
the smallest of the seven mountains in, in uh, Jerusalem. But it's, it's the mountain of worship. <sighs> so all these crowns that I've talked about, each one is a process for you to, to come to a greater understanding, a greater place of who you are in Christ. Whether it's the, the crown of the incorruptible, you know, whatever prison break you need. If there's corruptible things in your life, I want you to know in First Peter chapter 1, verse, uh, uh, when you go read from 1 to 5, it well, even down to 8 or 9, it talks about the incorruptible seed. The incorruptible seed of Jesus is in you. If there's anything corruptible in you, get the incorruptible seed doesn't want it there. That's up to you to make those choices. You've, you've taken a spur off to the great yard of delights of the flesh get the corruptible out the next one the crown of rejoicing we talked about that and get into that place that, uh, that ralph was talking about and you know the, the the joy of the lord and 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 just you know there there is no demon of joy and just rejoice and the enemy can't stand rejoicing and celebration hallelujah hallelujah just he can't he can't be near rejoicing i want you to know praise is proactive when you're in praise you're proactive, you're taking out the enemy. When you go into worship, there is no enemy around because the presence of God there, and the enemy can't be in the presence of God. Just enjoy his beautiful place of presence as he manifests upon you. The crown of righteousness, you know, the sound of the shofar, proclaiming, you know, uh, the, you know, we have to be ready. We, you've got to be Vigilant in regards to the, Jesus coming back, but whatever we have to do in the interim, it's it. Jesus says in the Word of God, "Be at what I have you to do until I come." Mm -hmm. Don't fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Don't be like the five virgins that fall asleep. Be vigilant. Be prepared. God's rubbing in His oil and His wine, the new wine, the crown of life. I want you to understand that. It, the temptation, the desire, the sin. Jesus went through it. We're going to go through it. And Psalm 36, 9, you know, stand in the light to receive more light. Drink from the fountain of life. Drink from the river of delights. But be in that place where you're so consumed in the manifest presence of God. And the crown of glory, well, for all you leaders out there, God put you into a place to lead. He put you into a place that he trusts you. So if there's some things that need to be fixed, I talked about Psalm 90, verse 8. Let's go to Corinthians. This is where we're going to end. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. On Saturday, I'll continue with this. Uh, there's two, th two things in Corinthians chapter 2. Verse I'm going to start in, in verses uh, 4 and 5. Because if you're a leader and God has placed you on a call as a leadership, this is what you should be doing. And in and, and, and verse 4 it says, And my speech and my preaching were not of persuasive words. In other words, he's the Lord wants a prepared man, a prepared son, a prepared daughter. He does, yes, a prepared sermon is good. And his persuasive words, but he wants his power and authority to go through a prepared, rubbed in, anointed man and woman of God. Prepared in power so he can have the power come through you. In the demonstration, okay, persuasive words. He doesn't want persuasive words and human wisdom, but he wants the demonstration in the spirit. And in the resurrection life of power of God, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power, the resurrection life power of the Father in heaven, God. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18 is this is the time of the spirit of revelation. This is the time of the spirit of wisdom coming together in this decade of hey. That when God speaks, your revelation, you're going to be seeing what God is seeing and speaking. Everything that's been in the past 10 years prior to 5780 has been everything in the prophetic. When I say prophetic, all the perceivers and those things, everything that you have seen, 
everything prophetically that you've spoken. Now it's all going to be coming to pass because it's God's voice speaking through you. This is the time of those impacting, impacting time, the power of God. Hallelujah. So you'll be doing it through God's eyes and God's heart. So let's just go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. <clears throat> now God had to deal with me on this and I repented and I and my heart's ready for it and if you if it's if it's you that needs to repent on this you repent as well because repentance is the start of all the R factor because God's not going to move until you repent there's going to be no reformation there's not going to be any revival there's not going to be any of the resurrection life but God wants to move in in your church your city your nation or whatever until there is repentance and true repentance so let's look at this can you read uh, uh, chapter 4, verses 1 to 5, Leslie? In 1 Corinthians chapter 4? Yeah. Okay. Rather than power brokers, think of us as servants of the anointed one, the liberating king, caretakers of the mysteries of God. Because we are in this particular role, it is especially important, important that we are people of fidelity and integrity. It makes little difference to me how you or any human court passes judgment on me. I even resist the temptation to compare myself to the ever-changing human standard. <laughs> Although I am not aware of any flaw that might exclude me from this divine service, that's not the reason I stand acquitted. The only supreme judge, our Lord, will examine me in the proper time. Is it just two, four or five? Sorry. Five. So resist the temptation to act as judges before all the evidence is in. How many people mm. walking around us act as judges and mm. great? So when the Lord comes, he will draw our buried ooh. When the Lord comes, he will draw our buried motives, mm -hmm. thoughts, and deeds, even things we don't know or admit to ourselves, out of the dark shadows of our hearts into his light. And when this happens, the voice of God will speak to each of us the only praise that will ever matter. Amen. Yikes. <laughs> so just talking out of the... <laughs> that's a yikes. That's a yikes. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. talk, so the, the, this is a break, prison break in so many different places in the mind and the flesh and in thoughts and deeds and so on. And the Lord wants to work in resurrection, life and power through you. He doesn't want you to be um, operating in your own strength and power and and persuasive words and 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 uh, how could I say prepared sermons? He wants you prepared. You're gonna have to study the word, but he's gonna give you downloads from heaven, and so they can all come together like boom. <laughs> and it doesn't mean you, that that doesn't mean you're not gonna prepare sermons. You have seven sermons sermons prepared before you go in. Generally, that's the way I do, and I'm ready to go on anyone. And then if God gives me another, I'm ready to go. Sometimes I get sermons straight from heaven. And there, I, I want to get the tape afterwards. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's better than my words. That's what's happening now. This next decade. God's going to be speaking. He's going to be blowing his shofar. This is the time of resurrection life. <laughs> Golly, eight new beginnings. Eight, zero, 80. And now we're going 2020. That's a kaf, K-A-P-H. You know, but in Hebrew, it's K-A-P-H-E. A kaf, two hands like this in worship unto God. And it's a double portion of worship. And when you're, when you're giving a double portion of worship up, he's giving a double portion of worship down. Get ready to receive it. You know, you're not going to receive nothing if you don't worship. you got to have cuff. 2020. Okay. Just I, one last tweak here. Verses 4, it says, uh, I, am, I am not the judge of this, but he who judges me. One of our other previous ones that we did on a, a live stream was the uh, equation of IR equals CTC integrity relationship is equal to care trust and commitment which is good covenant and that whole thing w was was based on um, another formula that I taught about afterwards in regards to Col J which is COLD slash J in other words uh, I ca we call it the five fruits of the devil or the five fruits of the, the kingdom of this world mm -hmm. and 
Criticism is the C. O is my opinion is the only the right one. Lee is legal, legalism. D is debate. Slash is is what's happening in regards to decision and so on. That like the little dash. But the J is judgment. And God doesn't want you judging anybody. So if you go and listen to that one, you'll see you always want to be operating in the opposite of that particular situation. So th this is part of the. It says therefore judge nothing before the time. This is the time. This decade is the time until the Lord comes. He's coming. Be prepared. He's rubbing in. Who will both bring to light the hidden things in darkness. Psalm 90 verse 8. He's going to bring it to light. Psalm 36, 9, 8 to 10 there. Stand in the light to receive light. You know, repent, repent, repent. There's anything hidden. <clears throat> and re <clears throat> if there's anything hidden in darkness and reveal the counsels, the counsels of the heart which each one's praise will come from God. In other words, that sacrifice of praise, because you're getting, it's, it's like deep, what do you call it, crevices? You know, there's deep crevices in the heart. Uh, what's James what? Uh, five, whatever. We talked about it on the last one too. So in the heart, there's deep, deep, like, like you know, icebergs and, and uh, glaciers. There's deep ice crevices right down deep. And it says, I ask the elders to come and anoint you when you're sick or whatever the issue is. Well, that's a prison. And you need to be anointed to get out of it. And uh, part of that anointing is whatever is hidden so deep, the anointing, Christ is the anointing that destroys it to get it out because it's been hidden for so long. And it's so deep, nobody can see it. You may not even know it's there. But the Holy Spirit does. And if it is, get out of it. So Hebrews... Uh, Chapter 4, verse 12, it says, you know, uh, what is faith? It, 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 it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Well, uh, Les is going to read that. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. And what is, what is it going to do? Well, it's, the word of God is going to slice you right down the middle. <laughs> He's going to, right from the top of your brains, right down the middle, right to the bottom. Why? Because he's got to separate your thoughts. He's got to separate your flesh. He's got to separate those things that control you from that flesh part. And he's got to set those things of your soul, your, your five senses that may be tied up in some of those bad things so he can separate those things. So whatever is hidden in what? Body, so spirit or in the heart, whatever is hidden down there. Could there be something hidden down there? Read verses 12 and 13. Because in verse 13 it says, yes, it's like a serpent hiding down there like a Leviathan. I'll teach that on another day. Go ahead. Read this. Um, so Hebrews ch chapter 4 and verse 12 13, and yeah. 13. The word of God, you see, is alive and moving, sharper than a double-edged sword, piercing the divide between soul and spirit joints and marrow, able to judge the thoughts and the will of the heart. No creature can hide from God. God sees all. Everyone and everything is exposed, opened for his inspection, and he's the one who will have to explain, who we will have to explain ourselves to. So, so yeah, you know what? We don't have to explain ourselves to a whole lot of other people. It's God that we have to stand mm. before and explain ourselves to. Amen. That's the one that really matters. Amen. So Hebrews, this is where we're ending, chapter 4, and we'll pick it up again. Uh, we're going to be going into the prisons on Saturday. Um, but I, what I like about Hebrews chapter 4, it's all about the promised rest. So you're not going to get into any rest. Uh, you're going to be tormented by the things of this world. And so, so the word of God, <clears throat> how strong is your faith? The word of God is, is, is a living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So Jesus, uh, John chapter 1, verse 14, uh, oh. piercing. You know, like that, Jesus is the living word, the living sword. He's the living faith that pierces even the, the division of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You know, again, Saturday we're going to talk about uh, Job chapter uh, 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 42 and uh, 41 in regards to what that creature is that that's, could be in your heart there. 
And there is no creature, it says, there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to his eyes and to whom we must give account. So based on the crown of glory, you can't hide your deception. And it says only the elect will be deceived. If it were possible, if we have the living, the Holy Spirit within it, we cannot be deceived. Do you get it? We cannot be deceived if we're pure of heart and we have the power of the Holy Spirit. So the process of all these five crowns are great. And uh, so the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and the Lord make his face shine upon you. You know, light coming into a prison is a prison break. Mm. The Lord be gracious to you. You know, that grace and mercy God gives us is that so that we get out of those prisons. We get out of those things that we can worship him in spirit and in truth. Ah, pure heart. So that his countenance that comes out every morning upon us, he shines his light on us every morning. So that we, we would be soaked and absorbed in his presence. That's what he wants. He wants us to be like him, shine like him, be like him. Every morning as one. And the Lord give thee peace, shalom, now and forevermore. Any thoughts? Bless you until Saturday. <laughs> Love ya. From Ray and Leslie, from Resurrection Life in Carberry, Manitoba, from the sunroom. It's always late in the sunroom. <laughs> Amen. God reigns. <laughs> the sun shines and sun God shines. reigns. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're done? Yep. We're done.